Uh, so it's glad to talk about today's topic about Orgo, an open source platform for multi-hazard assessment and response and planning. I think I'm in the same group uh, with uh, Luigi last week, ISDA, and also previously Kenton McKinney also uh, gave you a presentation about NDS. So we are all in the same group. So uh, before getting to uh, Orgo, uh, maybe I can give you a quick overview about the hazard risk assessment. I'm not expert on this area, but I think we uh, work on this area for a while, so we kind of grasp the idea about what this means. So I'm gonna give you a quick overview uh, about what it is. So uh, interesting to also define what is a hazard risk is. So hazard risk uh, is a refers to the risk of damage from hazard to building system or other entities. I think this is the uh, very interesting thing is that now we need to define what is the buildings and systems in society. Uh, some group of people define that as a built-in infrastructure. So that includes the buildings, bridges, pipeline, transportation, road networks, rail networks, and things like that. But some other also include on uh, different kinds of systems also. And especially the hazard risk such as earthquake has been defined as a potential like a economic, social, environmental consequences for those events happen when specify the period of time. So if you can search on the Google quickly, you can search on hazard map or earthquake hazard map in USGS. You are able to find out they have this hazard map of the earthquake in the United States. So when you're looking at those risks, it represents as uh, some uh, possibility of certain earthquake hazard within a specific period of time. That's a hazard risk. And then uh, what is a, ha a hazard risk assessment? Uh, instead of defining what this assessment does, those kind of questions are very typically uh, asked in this area. The first one is, what is the estimated damage or economic loss uh, due to the hazard that will affect the infrastructure of the region or a specific class of structure, such as hospitals or in some network like oil pipelines or water pipeline within the regions. Or another question is frequently asked is, are the levels of damage and economic loss recoverable or you cannot recover? And another question is, what are the most important structures to retrofit or mitigate the effect of disasters? So when hazard risk assessment is done, try to answer those questions is basically what we're trying to do. So typically, this is the very uh, um, rough schematics of what kind of analysis need to be done in the risk assessment. So for the, usually the researchers, they uh, rely on three major data sets or information. One is a hazard which you define the earthquake or tsunami or tornado. Also, depending on what kind of hazard, you could define some intensity measures. So for example, the earthquake case, the ground shaking, like a peak ground acceleration can be a good uh, uh, intensive measure. And the tsunami case is also maximum inundation depth. That can be a good intensive measure for the tsunami. Or uh, tornado cases, what is wind maximum wind speed? that can be intensive measure. So researchers define that hazard and intensive measure. And then second important uh, information is fragility curves and or damage functions, which usually means that how fragile the built-in infrastructure structures are depending on that intensive measure you defined in hazard. And third important component is inventory which usually is the location of building and what's the structural characteristic of building and what is economic value of the building like that. So if you have these three important components of information that you are able to the risk assessment analysis that will give you damage or loss estimation of the system. Then uh, based on that information, decision makers could do some decision support or optimization. I can give you some uh, information that how this schematic can be applied to different scenarios. Uh, so before we so get into what is Orgo, there's also, when you do the risk assessment in the hazard, uh, there's a variety of the data you need. So I already mentioned inventories of structure, including like building bridges, pipelines, water facilities, and power facilities, kind of, and also hazard, can be the earthquake, tornado, tsunami, and things like that. And also it requires some socioeconomic data. So demographic data from census, 
where list of the short-term shelter supplies, or what is the business data required, uh, related to the business uh, interruption information. And also you need to have some geological information like a soil types, liquefaction data, or topography. And also uh, there is a results of the another analysis can be used as an input to risk assessment, such as a result of simulation of tsunami. Especially the tsunami simulation models are very computing intensive. So we try to use in the Argo system, we try to use the result of the simulations to be an input for the risk assessment. And also statistical analysis of the tornado path or some deterministic model of the traffic model. What's the traffic uh, flow going to be in certain scenario? So those results can be also the input data to the risk assessment. So when you do risk assessment, basically you need to deal with all those things I just explained to you within a certain platform. So basically the Argo provides you the platform to uh, perform such a uh, multi-hazard risk assessment. Especially uh, when we're talking about Argo, it can be also a platform, which is a set of the libraries, a set of the all the component you can utilize to build your own application. And also we call Argo as application also. Sometimes we call Argo EQ or Argo software. And those systems, we have a three characteristics. It's a semantically aware system and spatially enabled system and also extensible system. I'm gonna touch upon a uh, little by little bit on each uh, aspect of system. And also a uh, quick history about Argo is the success of Mavis. Uh, it's a developed jointly by um, Middle America Earthquake Center, which is in at Un University of Illinois right now here, and National Center for Supercomputer Application, NCSA. We together developed the Mavis from 2006 to 2009. So that's when uh, May Center funding uh, by NSF, National Science Foundation, was terminated. So afterwards, it became an open source, and NCSA, we maintain the software, and then we changed the name to the Argo. Uh, for information, like, the 2006 is the time I hired at NCSA as a postdoc, as a programmer for the Oracle project. So this is kind of very uh, uh, interesting project for me. Uh, now I see that how it grow and mature and used by the community. And also we build some open source community around it. So we have a regular uh, Oracle workshops uh, internationally. Also we have a European and Caribbean and also the Asian partners, we work together and they provide us sometimes the data. We also give them some consultation and sometimes we uh, fix, the, fix the bug depending on uh, their experience with Argo and things like that. So we try to have this uh, annual workshops and then recently we uh, have a, a workshop at the Greece on June 17, 2018 this year. So uh, let me get into a little bit detail on the systems. Uh, so Argo is, like I mentioned, is open source. Uh, we are currently use a Mozilla uh, 2.0 license, Mozilla public license. Uh, maybe if you are interested in uh, some of the aspect of open source license, uh, Mozilla public license is uh, close to the Eclipse license. It's very business friendly. At the same time, it also have some GPL aspect of open source license. We leverage a lot of other open source projects. You can see here, especially the first one, we are using Eclipse as a core uh, fundamental component or the foundation of this software allow us to make an extensible system. So when we start to design the Argo, uh, one of the requirements we had was that there was a lot of research going on in the Middle America Earthquake Center which also means that we don't know when a new component, we don't know what kind of capability we need later on. So when we design the system, I think that we decide that it needs to be a plug-in architecture, it needs to be extensible. And also at the same time, we need to have some layered approach on the system so that you can see uh, the screen that there is a Oracle core part provide a lot of capability. So bottom, uh, part of the layer is Eclipse RCP, rich client platform, and metadata support that we built at NCSA. And on top of it, this um, yellow components are the data catalog, data visualization, analysis framework, and user interaction. And then on top of it, we build the geospatial capability using the layers in below. And then we build earthquake and tsunami and different hazard risk assessment component on top of the Argo core. So this is our uh, very uh, rough 
uh, architecture diagram that we, how we can support the plugin architecture. So like I mentioned, Argo is a spatially enabled system which we support the GIS. So we support the various geospatial data access. So like a vector format is a shapefile and PostGIS and raster is ArcGIS, SQGrid or GeoTIFF. And also it can be extended easily, especially we are using right now uh, Java GeoTools library, which is a very uh, popular and well-known library in the Java uh, so that any uh, format is supported by GeoTools can be also plugged into Argo system very quickly. We also provide uh, uh, Geospatial visualization in 2D and 3D. So you can see in the screenshot, you are able to do 2D and 3D visualization at the same time. And we provide the geospatial filtering and analysis. And also we follow the OGC standard compliant. So we follow simple feature specification and transformation specification also. And then I mentioned the Argo is extensible system. Uh, we are using uh, extensible extension point mechanism supported by Eclipse RCP, which is also OSGI specification. So right now in the screen shows that extension point and extensions, basically if you look at an Argo source code, you'll find very quickly those extension points. One of the extension points is render. So there's a 2D renderer, 3D renderer. So there's certain requirement in the extension point. And if you create RCP plugin, followed the specification, and then uh, loading into the Argo, you automatically recognize it and you are able to use it. So based on that uh, plugin architecture, we implement a lot of analysis related to risk assessment. So you can see that these white boxes are actual analysis and then gray boxes are category of the analysis and those lines are some of the dependencies where you are able to chain together of analysis. So I'm gonna show you later how this can be used. So um, now I discuss about some of the architecture. Now question is what Argo can do. So I come up with the three examples that are very typical questions uh, asked by some disaster management or FEMA or local uh, planners to prepare for the hazard situation. So uh, first example scenario is, uh, let's say the emergency manager needs to determine what is the short-term uh, shelter needs right after magnitude of 7.9 earthquake in Shelby County, Tennessee. Uh, this is one of the typical scenario earthquake in the Midwest in the United States because we have called the New Madrid Fault uh, in the Midwest, which is nearby the Shelby County, Tennessee. So this is a, one of the very typical uh, scenario earthquake on this area people try to prepare for. So in order to emergency manager to uh, do this kind of scenario, these tasks they need to do. One is definitely data management on the inventory, housing, transportation hazard. And they need to analyze what is the damage estimation on each buildings. And they need to also analyze how much population need to be dislocated. And then they need to compute the short-term shelter needs, how much shelter they need, and depending on how many population need to be dislocated. And then it needs also generate some reports about what is a shelter supply they need to require. Like how many cuts do they need, how many blankets, like those kind of information is coming from last one. So you are able to do all those tasks in Orgo. So now I'm going to share with you some of the screenshots of the Orgo, how this can be done. So first thing is the data management. So you are able to see in the screen right now, in the lower corner right here is called uh, with, uh, data catalog. It's very small, but we support about 220 data types and we have some example data available already. So if you download the Argo and then it automatically connects to the public repository, so you are able to test some of the data sets for your analysis. Right now, the uh, screen shows that the Shelby County boundary and also a highway network and the red dots are the multi-family housing buildings located in the Shelby County building. So you are able to do this kind of data management in Argo. Then next one is now you want to perform some analysis. So Argo provides you to have this workflow looks like analysis. So right now you can see here that start from use, uh, create the scenario earthquake and you do the building structural damage, then you calculate what's the economic damage, then you are able to have a household and population dislocation. But in the real world, what happens is usually you start from the last analysis first 
and then you can back chaining backwards. So in other words, that you start from population dislocation and then it actually asks that if you don't have the result of economic damage, then you are create backward and it kind of build this uh, workflow in the backward until the, all the information, necessary information is generated this. And after you fill out all the information and data and parameter, then the button right here, execute button, turn into the green and you can click button, you are now the analysis ran. After that, it's automatically show you data uh, about the results. So in this case, uh, we do have uh, some default style of the map. So depending on the output types, it also shows uh, some of the quantile or percentile of the data set, depending on your very popular column you're looking into. But it's uh, limited to you able to change the style of or display of the mapping if you want to. You can show in the below here, style editor you can change. So another way is you can look at those things instead of map, you can look at it as a table view. And you can see here some of the highlighted columns showed in the table view is the output or com computed results. White columns are input data, but all those uh, highlighted columns are appended to the input data as output. And also if, if you mouse over to the column, it shows you more detail about the data and also sometimes the units and some of the uh, metadata of the column shows up when you mouse over to the, those data. And then another thing is the emergency manager wants to do what is a short term uh, shelter needs. In this case, what they could do is right click on the population dislocation analysis and then there is a menu pop up to the what's next. If you click on what's next, it gives you what analysis you are able to perform after the result, with the result of population dislocation. So you are able to build up the, your workflow forward or so. So this case now you populate the uh, short-term shelter needs and you need to enter uh, required information and you're able to run another analysis. So after that, you are able to also looking at uh, this uh, information, which in a mapping and then view a uh, table view together, and then those highlights are shared. So if you highlight in the table, it highlight the map and back and forth and things like that. After that, you are able to generate report. The report that should tell you in this case what kind of shelter uh, needs and supply they have. So it tell you supplies for first day and third day, seven day for your planning purpose. And all those information we acquired when you work with a social worker in the disaster management. Okay, uh, second scenario um, is uh, the district maker of the Shelby County now needs to exercise $1.5 million to retrofit highway bridges for preparing the earthquake in the same scenario. Then question is now which bridge and what kind of retrofit method can be used so that they can use the $1.5 million efficiently. So they have now mostly six retrofit method for bridges. And also now, now question is what is the benefit? How they can measure the benefit of retrofitting certain bridges. In this case, they decide to do that is minimize the societal cost, which is a minimized increase of the total system travel time of a traffic. So they need to know which bridges need to be retrofitted with which method of minimizing the total system travel time under budget constraint is the way. So within the Argo, there is an analysis called network-based seismic retrofit analysis, which you are able to set this up. So what it does is that basically it uses a genetic algorithm for the optimization, and also you are able to allocate how much the budget constraint is and what kind of method of bridge retrofit you want to use. And then there is another one is what kind of traffic uh, deterministic model you want to use. In this case, we, have, we are using a Frank Wolf, a very um, typical traffic model we are using to optimize and compute the total, uh, travel system, uh, total system travel time in this case. So you can also enter all the input folder here and then random analysis. Now it displays in the slightly different way that it shows the, what is the link flow uh, on the highway right now. So you can see that darker red color is more congestion and then kind of more lighter color is less congestion when the earthquake happens. And also it generates that um, some of the budgets with a different kind of um, retrofit method and also retrofit cost for each bridges right now. So you're able to look at that what kind of retrofit method and what kind of cost in certain bridges that uh, 
rectangular dot is a bridge in this case. And also you are able to look at traffic flow with a 3D view here that you are able to quickly that um, because when you look at just a color, it's much easier to recognize where the congestion is in the 3D map in this case. And also you are able to uh, create a chart from here that you can, this case, it shows that uh, how the total system travel time changes in day zero and one and three, seven and 30. And also the red line is after earthquake with the retrofit. And basically the blue one is the after earthquake without retrofit. Especially you can see that in uh, day zero that when the earthquake happens without uh, retrofit is really, uh, you have a more delay happen in this case. And then a uh, third scenario is a very simple, but it's very useful is that um, lifeline utility manager, like a water or power network, they knows that interdependency of lifeline network are another risk, which usually means that people, when they do the risk assessment, they risk assessment on the water network and power network separately. So because of that, uh, it's very hard to uh, model the interdependence between. So, but they also know that these two networks are connected. For example, that water pump in the water network is connected to the power network. So even if your water pump is not damaged by the earthquake or hazard, but if your power network is disconnected, then definitely water pump doesn't work. So this kind of interdependency need to be modeled some way. So this uh, lifeline utility manager wants to know what is the impact of the interdependency between water and utility network and power utility network. So right now in Argo, we do have this interdependency network analysis, but this is a more of a conceptual level because of the modeling interdependency is very complex. Right now there's another research going on to have a more systematic way to um, building this the interdependency between the system. But in uh, this case, our analysis in Orgo uh, has a very simple in interdependency between water and power network only one way, which is the water network is influenced by the uh, power network. That's the model currently runs in the Orgo system. But this is a very interesting because this actually shows you that how uh, important is interdependent is. So if you look at here, this is a St. Louis area that we ran as a test with the earthquake of uh, six, six mo uh, mag moment of magnitude at Shoal Creek zone in nearby uh, St. Louis. And you can see here that on your table that uh, water network, uh, they, when they looking at connectivity loss percentage independent, which means that you are not taking account of interdependency, it gives you only 16% of a loss. But if you look at only one way, the simple interdependence with the power network, it increased to 23%. So I think it definitely shows that the modeling, the interdependency within the utility network is very important. So right now there's a other research is going on. Hopefully we can implementation of those interdependencies can be also built in the Argo system later on. So these things are basically, uh, I, I can tell you that what Argo can do, but there are about more than 50 analysis built in the Argo and all the categorized by the different built-in infrastructure. And also there is a social economy analysis you can find out in the Argo system. And the next uh, slide sets are, I try to show you some of the recent activities and what is the current updates currently we are trying to do with Argo. Uh, these are currently activity going on internationally. Um, the first one in the U.S. is right now we work with the Center for Risk-Based Community Resilience Planning uh, funded by NIST. Uh, we used Argo to develop the Incore version one, and then we actually does that for more of the con uh, conceptual uh, test bed with the center to uh, modeling community resilience uh, concept with using the Argo system. Right now we are uh, in the next stage of Incore version two, which is a totally uh, innovative different open source system. We are planning to release Incore version two uh, end of 2019. And the second is we work with the EU that critical infrastructure resilience platform uh, surf is a, a built uh, on Argo system. Right now, it is a project name is EU Circle. So you can search on EU Circle on this uh, and you are able to see that how the Argo can be used in the system. 
And the next system is a CARIBIS. Uh, CARIBIS is a Caribbean earthquake loss estimation system. Uh, they developed and released it last year, December. So currently they use this one uh, among the English speaking Caribbean uh, states, they're using the ergo system and CARIBIS to do their earthquake loss system uh, estimation right now. And then the fourth one is in the South Korea, uh, Convergence Research Center, the Disaster Hazard Resilience in South Korea. Uh, they also developed Argo CRC with us to build in some of the South Korean uh, hazard system in there. And also in the long time ago, but still I think used by the Istanbul Turkey is called HazTurk. And also there is a project is finished, but still you are able to find out this synergy project also developed EQVs using the Argo system. So this is a very brief schedule right now. Uh, current version is Argo 4.0, and we are currently planning to release 4.0, 4.1. We kind of in the beta stage for a long time. So in, during the fall, we tried to release it. So maybe we're going to release a 4.0, and then shortly after, we're going to release a 4.1 beta version. So some of the capability in here. And I'm going to show you some of the highlights about it. Uh, first thing is, uh, some of you, if you are familiar with the earthquake, there is a new attenuation function called NGA West, which is a new next generation attenuation for West of the US, uh, developed in 2014, and we implement in the Argo system. So you are able to use the latest attenuation function within the Argo right now. And second is we improve the region of interest. When you use the Argo system, you need to use the define the region of interest of the system. So now we improve the user interface and also we include administrative boundary of the South Korea when we work with the South Korean supercomputing center. Uh, this one is more about when you use Argo as a platform, you build your own plugins. We have very extensive list of API. You can build your plugin for the Argo. And we find out that some of the programming uh, is a kind of burdensome. So this time we simplify some of the iterator we call the how you can uh, build your um, plugin to the Argo analysis. So we release a simplify the custom iterator and we do have a tutorial about those things in our wiki page right now. And another recent activity is we start to uh, incorporate OpenStreetMap. Uh, so right now we are able to include uh, different style of the OpenStreetMap right now. So in this case, you can see the Shelby County data with the OpenStreetMap in backdrop right now. So this will really uh, helpful for the modern users to kind of looking at where it is and location in terms of contextual information too. So we are planning to not just OpenStreetMap, but we are able to have uh, some placeholder for Bing Map and Google Map and things like that. Uh, and the next two slides are uh, also another breakthrough recently we have. Uh, as you know, maybe you already find out Argo is a standalone application you can download on your system. You use it on local computer. Especially the, some of the repository in the server, but you can also create a local repository. So any analysis you are able to do in your laptop. The main reason we do that was when you start to develop in 2006, 2007, at that time, one of the requirements from the center was that they want to run Argo on offline situation. So that's why we built a system in the standalone application. However, you know, the technology changes, time changes. So now we want to add some uh, analysis supported at the server level. So what we did was we married Argo with the Data Wolf. Data Wolf is one of the NCSA uh, scientific workflow system we have. So we actually build a Data Wolf server. Then we also have Argo analysis able to, we call Data Wolf analysis, able to talk to a Data Wolf server to execute the workflow defined in the workflow Data Wolf system. So this win, this one now available to that um, right now that people can also they build their analysis code in the Python. They don't need to do Java anymore. But previously, they need to use Java and Eclipse RCP to develop uh, Argo platform, Argo analysis, or plugins. Now, especially analysis part, you are able to build that in Python or R if you want to in different languages, and you can deploy at the Data Wolf as a workflow system. Then now Argo able to communicate back and forth that utilize the Data Wolf as a server side analysis computing platform. So right now it's already uh, built in that you are able to uh, designate which data wolf server you want to use. 
the which is available in the preference in the uh, Oracle preference settings windows. And that will open up another door to Oracle to utilize HPC. So because of data offer, we have a concept called the executor and we do have an HPC executor, which able to communicate with HPC, um, which also means that what kind of batch scheduler you are using. So for example, data wolf able to support the PBS or uh, Sun grid engines and IBM's different batch schedulers we support. And also we do have the way to describe uh, different HPC resources in HPC executor. So after you define the HPC executor and also data transfer mechanism, then now Argo able to talk to Data Wolf to submit the job uh, to HPC through the Data Wolf. And all the status what's going on in HPC jobs can translate it through the Data Wolf and display in the Argo. So you are able to see all those things going on. And when the job is finished, then all the data is staged out from the HPC and send it back to the Argo and locally. So Argo can be a visualization platform of all those outputs run at the HPC. Uh, so, so currently, I didn't put the screenshot here. Uh, so we utilize this platform with the South Korean Construction uh, Institute. What we've done is there is a finite element analysis used by structure engineers a lot called OpenSeas. So OpenSeas can run in the HPC as an MPI job. So we utilize that aspect. So right now we already built in the Argo that you are able to submit the OpenSeas code were modeled through the Argo and it runs in HPC and download the output and visualize in the Argo system right now. So we're going to finish that uh, portion of OpenSys support uh, end of this year. So this is uh, last set of the slides are very uh, recent activities, uh, how what kind of new capability an Argo has and how Argo is currently evolved through right now. And end of the slide, I'm gonna show you a quick uh, video clip so hopefully that will helpful to see that how the Argo is works. So uh, this is a part of the project with the Incor project I mentioned in the NIST funded project. Uh, the data set you are looking at is actually virtual data set. It is not actual existing data set, uh, but we built called the Centerville, which is a virtual data set. And this is analysis is showing that uh, some of the electric power network damage analysis using the tornado. So in here, you can see that in your execute analysis, you can see that you are able to navigate through different kinds of analysis in this catalog. This case, we are looking at under the lifeline, there's a power, uh, electric power network damage analysis due to the tornado. And then finish it, and it shows this uh, workflow looks like a uh, user interface. If you click on the analysis, it shows that parameter you need to enter. You give the name, and then you need to give what kind of network you want to use. And then now you need to have a tornado hazard. And then in this case, you click the create button, it automatically populate another analysis box on top. And if you click on the create scenario tornado, then it pops up another form that you need to fill in. So it gives the tornado a wizard name and what kind of methodology you want to do. This case, we are not actually simulating actual tornado, but what they've done in the scientists they've done is they come up with a statistical model of a estimate what kind of tornado they could have uh, with various methodology. In this case, we pick the mean width, what is EF rating. In this case, we pick the EF5, and now you need to pick what is the start and end point of the, the tornado. And then you can see that all those things turn into the green, and you are able to click the X, execute button. And you can also show the sum of the against the parameter here. And when you execute, and you run the analysis, you can see the progress. When it finishes that, you may notice that on your left side, you are automatically add the output data set as a damages. So you, in this case, you can see uh, colorful boxes are actually a tornado path, and the different color shows a different wind speed zones. And then you can see also some of the dots shows up is power uh, utility facilities that the red color is a more higher damage and also, or even impacted by the, some of the disruption of the lines of power lines and things like that. So that's end of the video clip and that concludes my presentation. Thank you.